Hey, I'm Jamie Lima. Moonshine Harley Davidson, Moonshine Horsepower. Bike build number 27, Thunderstorm. This was a CVO and now she's in hiding. We took off the custom paint from Harley Davidson, gave it back to the customer. He wanted a whole blacked out bike, but there's subtle touches that let you know this was a CVO. Check it out. The CVO center dash console is uh, the telltale sign that this bike was a CVO. And then we have the CVO gauges still in her. But now she's a 143 cubic inch MHP Dominator build and she is rowdy. So this was a CVO with the CVO paint on it. We took the CVO paint off, gave it to the customer. It's what he was looking for. He just wanted a completely blacked out bike. Something that would typically tell you it's a CVO would be the black granite engine. But if you notice in here, this one's special. We went fully polished on pretty much everything. So if it was black granite and it was the CVO color before, as far as your cylinders, your engine case, your transmission, we went full show polish on it. Um, wanted to do something different. Customer was on board, wanted a show bike that he can ride, and it came out beautiful. A Little bit of lightning. Lightning's a crack of nice bright color in there. That's why we have the chrome, the polished engine, and a thunderstorm's dark, the bike is dark. Um, 143 cubic inch. This is our Moonshine Horsepower 143 Dominator. So when we do these 143s, you know, we have several on there that make well over 180 horsepower. Some of the limiting factors we see on these bigger cubic inch motors is exhaust and air cleaner setup. If we don't have enough air going in to the engine, it'll pull down the top end of the performance on it. Uh, this air cleaner is uh, sacrificing a little bit of top end peak because it just can't flow everything this bike needs. And we could do a bigger exhaust if we swap this Thunder header out for a Burns 2 and one instantly 10 horsepower gain. But to have this look, have the sound behind you and be able to tour with it, a couple things are gonna be sacrificed, you know, if you're going with a certain look. So this dyno, 175 horsepower at 6,300 RPMs. It made max torque at 4,500 RPMs. And as soon as you roll in a throttle, it's basically 140 foot-pounds of torque. And it just carries 140 plus foot-pounds of torque past 6,000. 500 rpms and it's a very nice and smooth torque curve the horsepower is just nice and smooth all the way up to 175 i mean if you're trying to race the bike and you need more horsepower we can get it with some additional tweaks as far as air cleaner setup and exhaust setup but for an everyday rider on 143 cubic inch monster build power all over you're not downshifting uh, you can wheelie this bike first second third very easily you're gonna get to 60 miles an hour super fast you're gonna get to 100 super fast it's a monster um, they're just rowdy that's all i can tell you instant throttle response it doesn't matter where you are in the rpms there is no replacement for displacement so 143 cubic inches and full show polish. These cylinders to get like this, we start them off with our MHP CNC Game Changer cylinders and then we have them polished. The heads on this engine are a pair of our Moonshine Horsepower Monster heads. They have titanium intake valves in them, Inconel exhaust, and they are 2.5 millimeters over the stock size valves that come in one of these M8 engines. It has our MHP monster intake manifold made for a 70 millimeter throttle body. This one is running the Horsepower Incorporated 70 and we polished everything. If you look at the intake manifold in there, she show polished. You don't see a lot of bikes done like this anymore. Back in the day when we were doing choppers and everyone was going through the chopper craze, you saw polished engines. Anytime we can chrome a bike out now, we can do a full polished engine transmission. We are gonna push for it because they look so 
nice in there. Now, in the comments below, I know I'm gonna hear it. Man, you can never keep it clean. It's hard to keep clean. I'm not gonna lie. But if you can keep it clean, you can stay on it, you can get your bike detailed, it is a showstopper. So if you're new to the videos, fully built lower end, we run the MHP Lightning Rods. This has a Screaming Eagle oil pump and plate. We are running fueling race series lifters, Screaming Eagle adjustable push rods, star racing full race 615 cam in this guy and it is running a pair of r four and a half inch pistons that uh, have a baby dome on them to get the compression we need for the street and of course it's got a two into one thunder header we got the og exhaust on there um, sounds great ties in really well with the build we need a, a larger primary pipe and we typically don't want to go over full race exhaust that is a short exhaust on a bike that's going to be ridden daily or going to be a touring bike with two up. So when we go to a two into one for a long exhaust on a big boy motor, the Thunder header has a larger primary diameter, allows us to get a little more horsepower out of it. That bike is beautiful. I wish this bike was mine. I thought my bike was nice until we built this one. Woo. So carbon fiber rims, got BST's front and rear. We are doing a 19 front on our 18 rear, and these are the Torque Techs. We got a full 320 millimeter floating rotor on the front. The reason we go with these style floating rotors is the inner rotor ring that gets bolted to the, the rim has a stop on it that hits your braking rotor stop. So when you grab the brakes, you are putting all the pressure in between the two pieces on the rotor instead of putting all the pressure on the bobbins to wear them out. We talk about it all the time. These just handle the weight of the baggers. We see some other brake rotors out there that don't have that system incorporated in them. And we've noticed the bobbins wear out and after a while you have a lot of movement here and they start to make a lot of noise and they're not held in the specs that they should be from the factory. Behringer radial calipers on her. And the front end on this is a Krauss Moto. KRT inverted fork. This is their standard one, so it's three quarters of an inch over the stock length. And for us, for a daily rider on the street that's not racing, that is the perfect height. Three quarters of an inch lift in the front while lifting the bike about an inch in the rear sets them up perfectly. Depending on which road glide or street glide you have, sometimes we gotta lift them an inch and a half in the rear, depending on what bike you start with. The reason why the inverted fork is so nice is you are removing all the weight from the standard fork, which has the fluid on the bottom. And, and fluid's heavy. Fluid weighs, if you grab a, a carton, a gallon of milk, you know there's some weight there. So we're taking the weight of the fluid and moving it to the top of the fork so the fluid isn't moving anymore, just the slider is moving, and of course your brake components and everything holding your axle through your wheel into your wheel, but now the fluid's up top, so you're losing the weight of the fluid. The lighter you can make the parts that are moving up and down the suspension, the more performance you're gonna gain out of it, the quicker the suspension can react. So this is an inverted fork because we have taken the fluid part and put it up top, so we've inverted it. Sport bikes have been running that for 20 plus years. We put it on most of these. The Olins is the top of the line suspension. Harley-Davidson is now incorporating them on the 2023 CBOs that they've come out with. They have a show inverted fork. Very nice setup in the factory. This guy is levels ahead of that factory fork. So that's why we go to these on our bigger builds. And it has a Hoffman short front fender on it, carbon fiber, looks really nice. And we did the Bridgestone Battle Cruise H50s on this bike front and rear for tire. We have a 300 millimeter rotor in the rear that isn't a floating rotor. It's a thicker rotor. And the reason we run that bigger rotor on the rear that's not floating is when you have a bike that weighs 800 plus pounds and you're using rear brake by itself and that's the only thing that's stopping the bike. It's a lot of weight on one rotor. So we want a really robust rear rotor that's not gonna warp on you that's not gonna cause problems. And the rotor we use on the rear, we've never had one give us a problem, so we run them. And when we find a product like that, we go, we, we're just gonna use it for all of our builds. Man, the lower balance, the lower fairing, the lower front fairing looks so good on these bikes. Once you do it with the, the short engine guard, I mean, it just ties the whole bike in. It gives it that mean look. The Rogue Glide already has that, that shark nose front end. But once you do the lower spoilers, 
from Harley Davidson. They make them paint match, which is nice for your bike. You got a red one, you got a custom paint from Harley. You don't have to worry about getting painted. Go to your dealer, get them paint matched right out of the catalog. It, it, it makes the look of the road glides. That was one of the, the best things that came out after they released the Rushmore for the front end of this bike. And it just changes the whole look of it. On the oil cooler down there, anytime we're doing a bigger motor, we are adding Harley Davidson's fan system to the oil cooler. If you have a Screaming Eagle, they come with it stock. If you have a regular bike, they don't have the oil cooler fan on it, so buy the oil cooler fan kit for your bike. It's just nice. If you're at a stoplight, it's able to draw air through that cooler to keep the head temperature on your bike down. Anytime you're doing a big build, a couple things to think about. The finishing touches, the powder coat. On this bike, we have a really cool powder coat. It's black, but when you get close, it's got a gold metal flake in it. And when you look at it, you're like, oh man, they, they powder coated everything and it just gives it a different look. Something else that I look at when I see other bikes built is I'm looking at the, the fasteners. This bike right here has a pair of ARP 12 point um, external fastener kit and we get those from Fueling. Fueling puts those together, it has all the bolts you want, they have them for the touring bikes, have them for the soft tail, but when you get down to it, it's a stainless steel polished bolt and it, it looks nice compared to the stock bolts that come on them. So when you are doing your build, Little touches like that make a big difference. I know the dollars add up quick, but if you're trying to build something to, to stand out and you want to do it one time, think about those small items. The Baker transmission, right here we have a six-speed Baker. And the Baker is nice because they come with a warranty on them. The Baker is a more robust transmission. And when you have something that's making 170, 180 horsepower, the taller gears in fifth and sixth in the Baker are really nice to have on the highway. So the Baker six speed, yeah, their fifth gear is equal to Harley six gear. Okay, so Baker six gear is an overdrive ratio compared to Harley's. So if you're gonna be running high mile an hour, you know, over the speed limit, you are gonna reduce your RPMs. You can cruise 90, you know, around 3000 RPMs instead of above it and the Baker allows you to do that if you're one of those guys touring. And then we can do different gearing on the back of the bike too. We can reduce maybe your takeoff gearing a little bit because this guy is gonna add more mile an hour because of the gear ratios and fifth and sixth gear on the Baker. Side covers, we got the side covers right from Hoffman in carbon fiber, they look good. It ties into the front fender, ties into the rear fender, it ties into the S and S carbon fiber teardrop intake cover. These are the standard Harley bags. This has the CVO Harley Davidson sound system that came on the bike, running a Saddleman Road Sofa Honor with rider backrest. And when you get a Saddleman seat and you get a Road Sofa, you can get them without a backrest in them, so there's no hole here at all. You can get them so they work with a Harley Davidson rider backrest, or you can get them where they're mounted with the Saddleman backrest in them. I prefer the Saddleman backrest set up the best if you are going to have a backrest. It's a smaller adapter piece in there and your seat slides right in. The Harley one, you have to pinch it and find its home. This guy, you're just sliding straight in it. And then there's a couple different spots that for height that you can click it in to allow you to have the desired height you want. This one is also heated. So right here on my left hand side of my seat, I have the rider heat, I have the passenger heat, and if you're gonna be riding when it's cold out, you will love your heated seat. Of course, you gotta match, so if you are doing the seat, just like doing the engine and your fasteners, make sure you get the backrests that match. So he's got the, the pad here on the tour pack that matches the whole seat, and it just ties in together really nice. The white stitching on there, the carbon fiber look, this is Harley Davidson's Chop Tour Pack um, with black latches. Really nice setup if you need a little bit more storage, don't want to be running the Big King. These look really good on the road glides, road glide specials, street glides, street glide specials. It just ties in the whole look and they're not too tall. Um, and it provides a great backrest for the passenger. Rear fender is the Hoffman carbon fiber rear fender. And we are running the custom dynamic rear taillights they're great, plenty of light in there. That is a run stop. So that is gonna be your, your normal driving light. Your running light is gonna be your brake light. And it's gonna be your turn. And those guys with the LEDs in there throw off a ton of light, very visible at night. 
and they have a lifetime warranty. Custom Dynamics is kind of the leader in some of the aftermarket LED lights for Harley Davidson, and uh, they're our go-to most of the time for lights on the bikes. And of course, you're not done until you got a pair of Baja design lights in the front end. So to finish off the front of this bike, you got a pair of Baja designs lights. Uh, you can do them multiple different ways. One with an amber and the clear, you can do two clears, multiple different options out there on the market. But when you have that light, you will absolutely love it at night. On this left-hand side over here, something cool you don't see every day, but we love it when we have the ability to do something different. So we are running a BDL belt drive setup on this bike. It is a two inch belt. Some of the older BDLs that you had to do with a belt primary, they were larger. They were three inch, they were bigger than that. Now with the technology out and the Kevlar belts and everything in these belts, they are able to reduce it to a two inch and it allows you to run a light front sprocket without the compensator on there because the belt has give. You know, when we do these, we never typically take the compensator out of the bike. We go to the MHP Comp of Power, which is the comp ramp, built out of billet steel. So it's a piece of uh, steel that's CNC'd and they don't break because Harley put a lot of engineering into that compensator. Works very well, saves the transmission having a compensator, saves your clutch basket having a compensator. We just want to make it where the parts inside the compensator don't fail. So our MHP compensator ramp um, doesn't fail. It do no longer breaks. But if you are going to a belt drive, the belt has give. It's kind of like a rubber band. And it will calm down some of that stuff without having to have the compensator. Some uh, pluses on it, it's light. The clutch is aggressive and it has a unique sound. Your Harley's now gonna sound like a Ducati. We'll fire this guy up, let you hear. Yeah, and this is your BDL open primary. Very cool setup. We were able to powder coat some pieces on it. We powder coated the cover. We just wanted to tie it into the whole build. The transmission top cover is also powder coated. Um, really unique setup. Customer wanted to stand out, be different. And, and this allows, you know, someone that's never seen one walk up be like, what is that? And um, it, it just ties the bike in. Looks really nice on this left-hand side. It's gonna hold the power that this 143 puts down. And we finished off the final drive with a chain conversion kit. So right there's your 530 chain. The chains are strong. Don't have to worry about ripping a bunch of teeth off your belt. You have more maintenance with the chain, but you never have to worry about a failure typically. Uh, you are gonna replace the chain a lot more than you would replace the belt. A lot of times when you got a belt from Harley Davidson, it was for the life of the bike. Unless you had a lot of power and you're ripping the teeth off or you possibly snap to one. Um, the chain, a lot more maintenance. You have to clean the chain. You have to relube the chain. You have to adjust the chain more. It makes more noise. But if you have a bunch of power you're putting to the ground and you don't want to have a failure on a belt, that is what you want to do to go to it. And of course, we have an aluminum swing arm wrapped up under this bike, powder coated black. It's a Behringer polished radial caliper on the Krauss radial brake mount. And we didn't have to do a rear axle kit on this bike because when we do the aluminum swing arm from Track Dynamics, it has the rear axle adjusters built into the swing arm. Whew, look at that big boy speaker. I'll tell you what, these are really cool. These Rockford speaker kits that we get from Harley. They have a factory plug that's sealed and it seals so good. They're a little bit harder to get out, but it's watertight. You take out your plug for your your subwoofer, you grab her. If you have a tour pack like this on the back, you just gotta be careful not to hit your tour pack. And your 10 inch sub comes right out of your back. You wanna ride with it, you have it in it. If you wanna take it out, it comes out that easy. That's right from Harley Davidson. We have to cut the side of the saddlebag to allow the air to escape in and out. There's two little guys here. If you are taking your sub out, and you were gonna ride with stuff. There's a cover that covers this with two little wing nuts that go on it, and that way it's uh, watertight again, and you can ride with it like a normal bag. 
your plug right here is gonna be left in your bag and your amp is in the very back. So really cool setup right from Harley. The only difference is now because we have that setup, it's a little bit harder to get the bag off. You have one quick disconnect and you have one where it's bolted, but the shocks right here underneath the bike, we have a pair of wheelbers and the wheelbers will automatically adjust height for just the rider or for when you set up a passenger. So this is a touring shock. Um, we like the Wilbers for this setup when you're riding a passenger a lot because it does its job really well and it is a very plus shock. The subwoofer, he's got on both sides two tens, one on the right, one on the left. Real simple installation. They have cool, unique handles they put on these right here. They have a handle on the back so it's very easy to hold on to this guy. You don't have to recalibrate the radio or anything when you take them out or put them back in. So put this guy back in. We just want to make sure we're not going to hit that tour pack. We're going to slide her right down into her home. If you look, the reason why we have to put this here is there's just not enough room for the normal bag hold. Um, it is a little heavier setup in the bag too, so that is a little more secure. And then you are going to take this wire here, it goes right underneath there. And just going to go straight in. Now your back set up with your subwoofer in your bag. Now the front end, just like most of our builds, this has the Moonshine Horsepower Wolf One with solid gauge mount that is made by Kraus Moto for us with our specs. We designed the solid gauge mount in collaboration with them. You can only get it from us. Only works on the kickbacks. This is a 10 and a half kickback riser set up from Kraus Moto. It has a two and a half inch fly moto bar. So this is a total of 12.5 inches of bar setup over stock, you know, from, from your triple tree. So it's a 12.5. You have full adjustability of your bar. So it's like a normal T-bar setup with full adjustability. And the reason why it's a full adjustable is we can move the bars forward and back to get the roll exactly how you want them. Um, it's adjustable because you swap them out to different bars. And the position where the risers mount to the mounting location from Krauss, there's multiple different options. We can mount them to the stock location on the triple tree, which would be right here, which we typically mount them. But every once in a while on a touring bike, when you're sitting back in the saddle, especially if you're riding with a rider's backrest, you're, you're not sitting straight up and down where you maybe want your bars up front. You're kind of slouching, you're relaxing, you got the highway pegs up front, and you're gonna be sitting back a little more. So that's when we will go to what is called the Kraus Moto T-Rex plate. T-Rex because, you know, T-Rex has a little arm, so we're trying to get the bars closer to you. So that allows the bars to come back an inch and a half closer to the rider. And it, it's just putting them in the pocket of where they want to be sitting. Just multiple options to be able to move them. That's why we say they're fully adjustable for the setup for a T-Bar style bar. Of course, our main reason for running the Krauss Moto setup is we're not running the polyurethane or rubber handlebar isolators down here at the bottom and having a total amount of 12 and a half inches of torque on those rubber bushings. In Krauss's setup, he has engineered the bushings to be right below the handlebars. So no matter where we move the handlebars, the bushings are always right below it. And we're typically running a two and a half inch bar you have about a half inch of riser, so you only have three inches of leverage. That way when I'm pushing on this guy, kind of, you know, with some strength, you're not getting a lot of flex. If you go to a stock bar, you go to some other aftermarket bar setups out there on the market, some other T-bar setups, you come to your bike and you push it forward like this, and you'll see a, a, quite a bit of movement. Anytime you're pushing the bike into a corner, you're stopping fast, you're taking off fast, you're picking the bike off the kickstand. The more rigid we can make this while maintaining an isolator to reduce that vibration to your hands, the better the bike's gonna feel and the more comfortable you are gonna be on your motorcycle. So that's why we always go to the setup. Of course, got our favorite grips of choice. We have the Performance Machine grips on here with the Renthal rubbers. We talk about it all the time. It's just a narrower grip. Uh, the rubber feels really good. You're not going to be slipping around. Um, it, it's just a really well designed grip. It's a little bit narrower at the end, a little thicker right there where it's going to sit in the pocket of your hand where all your strength is. Everyone that has these grips on their bike loves them. Um, and they don't even pay us to say that. We just, if someone's got a good product, we're going to use it because we want the best for our customers. A pair of Harley Davidson mirrors on here. This came stock on the CVO and it has a 
custom pair of our lines on it that we measure to make sure every fits, everything fits really nice on the bike from the factory. Let's talk about this little guy on the left-hand side of the bar. So every once in a while you see him on our builds. We always have these in stock and that is the rock form mounting kit for a Harley Davidson. And it's mounting right to the two bolts where the perch clamp goes. It has a magnet here, it has a lock system here. You gotta get a cover for your phone. But your phone's gonna go on the four-way lock. It's gonna swing in and it's got a magnet on there and it locks into the bar. That way you have your phone on your bike. Just so easy to use. That way, if you like your nav on your phone, you can use it. If you just want to see if a call's coming, deny it. Maybe you're running a headset, you got a Senna on your helmet. You can see who's calling you real easily. Click your Senna, it's up there, it's very visible. The less we have to move your eyes away from the road, the safer you're gonna be. So uh, we also ran his lightning cable through the handlebars and everything. It's plugged in right here, so it's really easy to charge the phone on long rides. And it's just an overall nice setup. Thunderstorm, man, 143 cubic inch moonshine horsepower dominator build. Amazing bike. I want it. She's rowdy. Showstopper. And this, this has got to be one of the prettiest bikes we ever built. Mr. Bama Ford, greatly appreciate you letting us build your bike.